working drummer. Now kick it. This is the Working Drummer Podcast, serving up perspectives, experiences, and stories from ground-level working pros. Advice, tips, and secrets on how to build a career in the music business. Hey everybody, this is Matthew Krause, and you are listening to the podcast Working Drummer. Today my guest is drummer Will Easterwood. After moving to Nashville in 2008 from a small town in Georgia, Will has been building his resume year by year as those in Nashville discover his drumming and musicality. His experience as an engineer, guitar player, and vocalist has proven to be an asset to his playing as a drummer. For the last three years, Will has been the touring drummer for country duo Trick Pony, and when he's not out with them, he's an in-demand drummer down on Nashville's Lower Broadway. In an effort to diversify his workload, Will has just started a drum service called Circus Bear Drum Services. To find out more about this podcast and other episodes we've done, go to WorkingDrummer.net. You can find us on Twitter, Instagram, and Facebook. You can subscribe to the podcast on iTunes, and while you're there, leave a rating and review. In an effort to make it easier to access the Working Drummer podcast and share with your friends, we are looking into other formats like Google Play and Tunes to Tube on YouTube. Stay tuned for more information about that as that develops. We all love vintage gear, and I bet you know someone that owns an old Les Paul or maybe a 56 Fender Strat that never leaves the home, and the question is, why do we love this gear? It looks cool, it gives you that warm, handcrafted tone, and often brings a unique vibe to the music. Of course, it has its limitations, and if we're talking drums, we run into problems like its fragility, limited tuning... So where am I going with this? Well, once again, I went back out to KHS America in Mount Juliet, Tennessee to spend some time with some vintage gear. I'm talking about the Sonar Vintage Series Kit. I had seen and heard these at Summer NAM, but now I had a little one-on-one with these beautiful drums. Some specs you should know that make these drums uh, a modern vintage kit. The shells are that hand-selected premium German beach shell with rounded bearing edges. Keep in mind, this comes from the same forest of beechwood trees that were used in the manufacturing of sonar drums from the 1960s. The recreated teardrop lugs are a big deal. They look and feel just like the original, but now it has sonar's exclusive tune safe system. In other words, they stay in tune. There are many beautiful finishes you can choose from, like the vintage pearl and my favorite, the red oyster. It looks, sounds, and feels like a vintage kit, but maintains the quality and reliability of a modern kit. You could really call this a modern vintage kit. So go to us.sonar.com to learn more about the vintage series and find a dealer near you. So let's get to it. Here is Will Easterwood. Funny thing, I hate singing and playing at the same time. Really? I despise it. I, I, I can do it. Yeah, I, I don't know that I do it well. People think seem to think that I do, but to me, it takes my focus off of being the best player that I can be. Mm, yeah. And it, <clears throat> I never really thought that until about two years ago. It kind of hit me. I'm like, I'm having to focus on running tracks, mm-hmm. playing, yeah, like the guy that I want to play like, mm-hmm. and singing really well. And it was, it's just like all of this kind of hit at one time. And I'm like, I really just don't like playing and singing at the same time. Hmm. And I used to, fr- I used to front a, front a show uh, downtown every Monday night where I just played acoustic and sang 80s and 90s country songs. Now, do you like doing that where you're just singing um, and playing acoustic? It's fun. Yeah. It's not something that I want to do for the rest of my life. I mean, I, you know, uh, I, I do a lot of stuff in town where we're not on the road and I'll sing and play drums at the same time, and I'll have people come up and say, "You, you need to do. You, you need to be out front." Hmm. Well, thank you. That's yeah. a huge compliment. Yeah, but I don't want to do that. Yeah, there's too many politics, and huh. I'm fat. So, <laughs> 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 you know, I had uh, lunch with my friend uh, Eddie Bell yesterday. Mm. Do you know Eddie? Uh, we've met. I we're not. I, we're not close, but I okay. I, I, I know Eddie. Eddie uh, was a, a super regular sub for me when I was working. And I just quit my road gig last week. So if anybody needs well, con- a drummer. Congratulations or, or my condolences, whichever you prefer. <laughs> well, right now it's congratulations. Uh, ask me in two months. Perfect. When I'm yeah. missing that paycheck. Um, but 
Uh, we met yesterday, uh, and we're talking about teaching, and I'm just I'm trying to reconnect with people. But one of the things, my point is, is he is really into playing guitar and singing, and feels like after all these years that he's just not into playing drums the way he thought. And I think he's a unique, it's a unique situation. And, you know, he's, because when I think about it, I think, I just, I'm so drawn to the instrument. Sure. Even with all the other things that we want to do with music, whether it's pick up the guitar or learn a little bit of piano to help us kind of understand music, whether it's you want to produce or engineer sure. or write or do those things. And it sounds like that's kind of where you're coming from. You're like, just let me play drums. Yeah. You know? Because I, I, I mean, I dabble in playing really horribly mediocre guitar. <laughs> I can strum chords. I can yeah. make it look like I know what I'm doing. Yeah. Uh, and I, I mean, I own a bass guitar. <laughs> there were, there were, there were, there was a time bass where I would, take, I would take Broadway gigs on bass just because I've heard the songs a million times. Right. And I know how the songs are, how the songs go chord wise. Yeah. So I would just take a bass down and play and oddly never got fired. Oddly never got not called back for a gig. That says either a lot about you or not much. About <laughs> like I said, I, I, I can make it look like I know what I'm doing. Um, but I own that and I would, you're like the hot fiddle player, female fiddle player, oh, yeah. but on bass. Oh yeah. Yeah. She can make it look like she knows what yeah. she's doing. I can't play it behind my head though. Um, okay. I don't know what that means, but oh yeah, they like to play behind their head, and you know, okay, okay, so, yeah, you know, or behind their back. Sorry, not behind their head. That's a guitar I, thing. I see. Um, one thing I've always wanted to own that I've never, for some reason, I've blown more money on stupid shit than I have probably on drum stuff. I would love to own a steel guitar hmm. since I was a kid. Like that's been the one thing that I've always wanted to have in my possession, and I've never owned one. But nothing. But if only my, you lived in a town where steel guitar was commonplace. No kidding. Um, or bad. relevant anymore. Or <laughs> that's true. <laughs> I mean, and it's it's not because I want to go and play steel guitar for Garth Brooks. Yeah. It's just because there's something melodically that draws me to that instrument, and mm -hmm. there's so much emotion in it. But my point being, my point being, none of that compares to me playing drums. Yeah. That's what I want to do. Yeah. Everything else is just, oh, I can have fun with this at home. And I have a sneaky suspicion that your playing does not suffer in the least when you're singing. It just feels like that to you. It does. I mean, I've obviously, we, we've all heard board tapes of ourselves and right. GoPro videos and, and, yeah. and you know, our, our in-ear mixes, you know, played back. And I'll sit there and listen to it after a show. That's when we get done with the show, I take my GoPro down okay. and I am, I'm, I pack up. And I go to the bus and I change. I'm usually not, I don't usually don't go and find the hottest chick in the, the club that's for other people to do. I don't. Okay. I, I'm 29. I'm going to throw that out right now. Why, <laughs> when we just getting started, I want to throw that out. I'm still a really young guy in town. Uh, and we'll talk more about that. But I literally just, I take my GoPro down, I pack up, I go to the bus, I throw my sweats on, my bus clothes, and I go to the back lounge and I pop my computer out and I'll start listening to the, to, the, the GoPro. Yeah within an hour of being done because I want to know how I did. So I'll sit there and listen and I'll critique myself. And I mean, I can tell, sure, I can play to a click. I can play mm -hmm. to tracks mm -hmm. while I'm singing. It's just, it's become second nature. Yeah. So no, it's not, it's not hard. I don't think that I don't do it well because I've obviously heard myself back do it and yeah. it just confirms that, okay, you can do it. Yeah. yeah. Just don't love it. Yeah. Yeah. I know what you're saying. You know, cause I'm trying to say all this without sounding like a dick, by the way. It's Okay. You sound like Most a people know that it's, okay. you don't have to try. Yeah, That's okay. No, you know what it is? I think there's times when we have those gigs where we just don't feel great. That's why I'm like, yeah, um, I'm battling that right now. Right. Not, not what I want. And then I want to point out, not, not with my road gig. Yeah. Or could it be with my road gig? You know, I don't know. Who knows? I don't know. But, but, but then when you, you're, you're, you're like, man, I just, I, I sucked and I just didn't feel it. And then you, you listen to a recording or something and then you're like, you know what? It, it wasn't that bad. Or, you don't put yourself down. It's like you have to just kind of let it go and know that the sure. performance was good, the job was done, the band was happy, the audience was grooving. So get over it. It's time to move on. It's time sure. to just. Uh, it's a. Um, it's an in the moment 
performance. Sure. It's what, it's the type of art that we do. I mean, for lack of a better term is it's a performance that exists in that time and period. And once it's done, it's done. Sure. And that's why I guess recording is different. And now we're recording ourselves all the time. Oh, absolutely. You know, well, and if anyone listened to the hundredth, uh, podcast with all of the goobers that sat in Ben's I don't basement. think anybody did actually. No, right. probably not. I think I think actually the guys that did the podcast were the only ones that actually listened to the no. podcast. <laughs> uh, I actually listened to it the other day driving around town and I was literally in, in tears because I forgot a lot of things that got said and I'm just I'm bawling in tears laughing. But but something Kevin Murphy said um, Keep going, man. he said something uh, about me being far too hard on myself and being my worst critic and I got to thinking and he's absolutely right that you are I oh absolutely no I I am and he, he is he, too, he man. says oh absolutely we all are we have I mean, it's just a it's just a drummer thing yeah it's, maybe it's a musician thing but I think it's mm-hmm. a drummer thing but he said that I am most of the time way too hard on myself if I if I'm not mm-hmm. I don't feel like I can get better I was going to say, what's your defense to that? Like, what are you? I, do you I like think, that you're I hard think, on yourself? Well, no, do you I think, think that's everybody productive? should. Absolutely. I think everybody should critique themselves. I probably honestly do it way too much. Yeah. And I will joke with people, you know, I'm, I'm just mediocre. But in the long run, I think it's good to be hard on yourself because mm-hmm. if you're not, you're going to slip. Well, let's talk about that because there's a couple schools of thought here is that you can be you can critique yourself you can um always want to improve no matter where you are in your career in your life Absolutely. so all that stuff is important and yet i read a book uh, just one book ever now uh i'm trying to remember the same the um it was called the class clown it was in middle school i think that's <laughs> the last book that i read front to back I think the first book I ever read front to back was The Boy Who Drank Too Much. <laughs> Wouldn't mind getting my hands on a copy of that now. <laughs> the, um, the Artistry of Motion, I think it was what it was, but it was a... Oh, was yeah. A, yeah, and uh, a buddy of mine recommended it to me, and it's the f- it's the I've read it once, and I know I'm going to be reading it at least five more times, because... The thing that I use, we all struggle with is sometimes confidence and trying to understand motion. And one of the things that said that when you repeat a mantra to yourself, you begin to believe it. And when you say, I suck, I suck, I suck, next thing you know, you really start to believe it. And then it manifests itself in a way that sometimes isn't good. Now, we all know those players that are like, man, check me out. I'm, I'm pretty badass, you know, and it's like, and, and that's the first person I'm not going to check out. And, and, and I think that we're so afraid of coming across the way that person behaves that maybe we shy away from it too far. So I'm playing devil's advocate here because I'm the same way, man. I can be a harsh critic, but, but you know, when you have a good performance and a good, um, video or whatever you're like that's pretty badass because you have videos online man you have stuff did you post those i don't know okay (laughs) i'm not i'm not one of those those guys that is and i know it's bad because now we live in a very social media Mm -hmm. based world i don't have a ton of stuff that i've uploaded mainly because 90 percent of the stuff that i've videoed i think i could have done better so well, I, don't, I don't. I won't post it. I actually started to post something. I was. I just literally clicked on a on a on a an old GoPro video the other night. Just I was laying in bed, kind of going through some stuff on my computer, and I was listening to our playoff that we do. And I was like, "Man, we were we were in it. Like we were yeah. getting it." Yeah. I didn't post it because I'm. I don't like being that. Hey, look at me. Look at me. Look look at what I can do. Mm-hmm. Hey, watch me prove myself. Mm-hmm. If I, I mean, uh, the, the, what I get the most kicks out of and what I love to upload, there's a video on Instagram that I uploaded and even put it in the drummer's page that was, we were playing, I believe, in California or something, and there was this big moment. Our singer does a cappella. And there's a big snare crack right when his arms come down. <laughs> well, what if, for whatever reason, my stick hit my cymbal. <laughs> 
and my stick went flying through the air. <laughs> and it was on this, the biggest moment at the end of our show. And you just hear me laughing through my, through my vocal mic. Like, yeah. I'm just, I'm dying laughing. Heidi, my, my, one of my bosses comes over and she literally turns around and hands me my stick back. And that's the, and I got more laughs and views off of that. Yeah. And I loved it because it was me. Right. It, I, I'm sharing myself yeah. really blowing it and screwing it yeah. up. It really didn't, it didn't screw the show up at all. Right. It was just a really funny moment. It might have moment. even added something to it. Oh, no, I get it. I get it. But, but I was asking a friend of mine about this. I was like, you know, it's like, well, should I, gosh, what was the question I had? Something about posting stuff. Um, and, and he goes, you know, I think it was playing, playing covers. Cause I just sure. I have a weird thing about playing, not, not playing, not having a recording of you playing live a cover, but you playing along with a record. Cause I, I did that for myself, an old yes song, but I, I was like, I don't think I want to post it. It's, that was just more f- for fun just sure. to see if I could do it. But I, I, don't, I don't think it's, and he goes, no, but having videos of you playing and, and luckily we have opportunities with groups that we work with and, and gigs that we have that we can provide that information. Cause he said, well, what if somebody says, Hey, uh, I know a drummer. You should check this guy out. Well, is the first thing that someone's going to say is, "Well, can I see him play? Do you have you know pull your phone, pull sure. him up on your phone?" And if you have something on there, which you do, and it sounds great, man, and you could hear your the, your skill set, what you're able to do, the feel that you're able to provide in those videos, I can tell right off the bat. So if somebody say, "Hey, let's let's uh, do you know Will Easterwood?" No, no, I, I've never heard him play. Well, here, check this out. Here's one or two or three videos. And someone's going to say, okay, cool. Now, maybe that's all you need. Sure. Because you know people make the decisions in auditions for major uh, label artists. You go in and play two, maybe three songs. You're not and t- speaking so. of that, uh, I, I literally, I was just having a conversation the other day. Uh, a very big act was having auditions. But mm-hmm. instead of you coming in to play with them, <laughs> you went to a rehearsal facility in town. And you, you went video, to where? You, a rehearsal facility. Uh, okay. Uh, it's our yeah. sound checker, uh, wherever, but sound yeah. image. You set up and you videoed yourself playing their songs. <laughs> that was the audition. And then you sent it in. <laughs> Which is the first time I've ever heard of somebody doing that. I've asked to, to sub, I've been asked to submit a video of me playing for a gig. Um, yeah. Yeah. Um, I've heard of it from a guitar player friend of mine that was supposed to audition for somebody, and they said play our songs and then send a video in. But I, but it what like from your home, right? Which I don't understand the purpose of any of that. Anybody can play. In any anybody that's well, I won't say anybody. Most people that are going to get the call for the audition can probably play the song. Yeah. Can they play it like the last guy? Who knows. Yeah. They can probably play all the notes. Yeah. Enough to to do the show. Yeah. It's not about that. It's about if the other eight people in the room dig your vibe. Yeah. So you've just lost Yeah. You're basically gambling on the fact, okay, we're gonna hire guy from video number four. Okay, cool. Send him to the bus call, send him the location, we'll take him out. Yeah. That guy gets on the bus and he's an absolute moron. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. That's on you. Mm-hmm. Or he can't handle the pressure of performing. Sure. Oh, well, yeah, whatever the situation might be. Because he recorded and he submitted the, the performance. You didn't take won. the time to get to know him as a person for even two minutes. Yeah. That's on you. They're missing an opportunity to Absolutely. probably meet. I mean, how many people looked at that or heard about that and said, screw that? Well, not even not even the guy that gets the gig, but the guy... B, C, D, and E that also auditioned who could have been the next guy should that guy not work out. Mm-hmm. You just lost an opportunity to meet everybody. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. You're watching a video. It's pointless to me. But. Is it possible at all that maybe that was like step one and then maybe I don't they think would so. bring it? Yeah. I, from what I Your impression understood, my impression was no, it's a, yeah. you get videoed and you get hired. My first thought is how pretentious. And do you want to work with an organization that's now if somebody that's listening to this is probably on that audition right now? <laughs> oh, absolutely, because I know a few of the people that did it. How um, many people am I going to piss off? Um, no, it's that's it's ridiculous. I, I understand it to a point because if you don't have time 
to bring in, if it's a band to where you have eight or nine band guys, which is very rare, by the way, these days, obviously, yeah. you get four, a guitar player, a bass player, and a drummer, and a singer, and, and yeah. a, a tracks, and you know what, that's that's your band. But for somebody that's been around for a while and, and can is able to do a six, seven, eight-piece band, it's hard to get those guys together on the drop of a hat to come set up and blow an entire day the week of a show. Mm. So I kind of, I, and one, I'm kind of contradicting myself. I kind of, no, no, I, I kind of get saying. it. Sure. Mm-hmm. But at the same time, it just sucks. Yeah. Luckily I didn't do the audition, so I didn't get called for it. So I didn't have to worry about it. <laughs> oh man. I feel like we've strayed way off the beaten path. I don't think there ever was a path. So Perfect. I mean, that's good. Like um, that. You've been your road gig has been trick pony. I have it, it, or it, it is, it was, is, I think since uh, uh, you still have it. it I well, do. I don't know. You're running. You <laughs> you put this in front of a, a. No, I was kidding. The 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 gig I was talking about earlier that I was kind of in the predicament was was not my road gig. Um, okay. There's actually been nothing but love on my on my touring gig. Um, I think I've been there. I think June will be three years. Three years. Yeah. Wow. Um, it's been fun. Um. I haven't done a whole lot first of the year. It's kind of that first of the year, sure. you know, hibernation phase. Mm-hmm. Um, but there are a lot. Heidi and Keith um, are a lot of fun to work with. They're, yeah, there's there's never a dull moment. <laughs> I assure you. Yeah, not one. Um, How did that come about? Um, it actually spawned off an earlier touring gig, a relationship I had made with my friend Mark, uh, our front of house guy and tour manager. Mm-hmm. Um, who actually knows is not with us now because of health reasons. Um, mm-hmm. We had been friends for a long time. Uh, it mm-hmm. started out, I, I was playing on Margaritaville downtown like five, six, seven years ago. Yeah. And he was just this old, old school rock and roll, long haired ponytail guy that ran sound for us. And I'm like, every time I walked in, I'm like, I know Man, Mark. Yeah. I that, Mark. that Mark. I know Mark. Yeah. And I walked sure. in and every Friday and Saturday I was like, and my ears sound great, you know. Yeah. Finally, a sound guy that knows what he's doing. Uh-huh. So we always worked really well together. Well, sooner or later, he called me one day and goes, "Hey, I've got this guitar tech gig. You know enough about guitars, right?" I'm like, "Sure, why not?" Uh-huh. So that led to me guitar teching and stage managing for a guy named Casey James, who was on yeah. American Idol. Uh-huh. Um, and that Mark and I toured together for about a year and a half. And then Casey's whole camp totally changed. Everybody. Hmm. The whole band, uh, minus the bass player. Dino was still with him at the time. Um, whole camp changed. Cool. All right. You know, that was fun. Mm-hmm. I, I guitar tech for a, a summer and a half. Uh, that was new. Yeah. I'd never done that before. Wow. Um, and from there, I went to doing monitors and stage managing for Craig Campbell. Uh, where I got to watch Austin Cucurudo, uh do awesome stuff every single night because it's Austin and he's solid as hell and wow. fun to watch. Uh, and he makes funny faces, which I like. Okay. <laughs> um, uh, and I, th- I believe Mark came on that gig right after I left. Um, and we were both kind of sitting around uh, and he went, or sorry, he went, sorry, my phone went off, so apparently I'm ADD as usual. <laughs> Um, my uh, naturally, uh, everybody, my, some of my buddies would kick out of this. My my buddy said, "You want to go to Hooters to have lunch?" But this is more important. <laughs> um, so Mark calls one day and goes, "Hey man, um, I am now front of house full time for Trick Pony." I'm like, "That's awesome, man! Congratulations!" I'm like, yeah. "They were the first. They all right? I was six years old. Saw Garth Brooks first concert ever. Don't remember it. I was six. I fell asleep." In, in the Omni in Atlanta, yeah, thirty thousand people. Yeah, I was knocked out. Don't remember it. The <laughs> first concert I ever went to that I actually remember going to was Brooks and Dunn Neon Circus Tour in Atlanta, oh one, I think. Okay, Brooks and Dunn, uh, Dwight Yoakam, Chris Cagle, Gary Allen, uh, Cletus T. Judd hosted. Yeah, I remember who that was. Yeah, um, and Trick Pony opened the show. Wow! So they were my first concert ever. Really, that I remember, yeah, sure, that sure. I was actually attentive to and remember seeing. So a uh, little time goes by, and Mark calls me back. He goes, hey, man, I need a singing drummer. I said, with who? He goes, with, with Trick Pony. I'm like, okay, 
I'm not doing anything except for playing Broadway. Mm-hmm. Let's make it happen. Yeah. And I said, let me know where I need to audition. If I need to send some, send some videos like we were talking about. Luckily yeah. I have a few. Yeah. Um, and he goes, no, 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 just, we're just going to come shake hands at this house party in East Nashville. Uh, they're having a, like a, like a fundraiser kind of thing. And mm-hmm. they want you to just come shake hands and, and meet them. Yeah. They've, you know, they, they trust me. And the band leader on the gig is somebody I had played with downtown for years, hmm. um, years and years, probably seven years on and off. Hmm. Uh, so he knew that I could play and he yeah. knew that I sang. Yeah. And, um, he goes, no, Kai, you know, the band leaders already talked you up to him. They trust him and they trust me. What a concept. You don't have to play. Yeah. They just want to come see if you're a cool person. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So me and my girlfriend. So again, how time, did you get the gig? <laughs> I don't know. It was a, it was a, Hey, will you come meet Heidi and Keith and just, yeah. you know, see if you mesh. Yeah. And I went and Keith's a Georgia boy like me. So we immediately hit it off being two Southern old rednecks. Yeah. Uh, and he's just the most simple minded person ever, which is great. He's great to be around. He's, you know, he's yeah. no bullshit, just straightforward kind of guy. And I love that. Yeah. Uh, Heidi is obviously Heidi. She's fun and, and, and just peppy and just like one of the boys. So we met and I stayed there for an hour and they were like, see it bus call. Nice. No rehearsal. Yeah. No audition, no rehearsal. I had a four days of prep time. To learn Did you have like a live tape of anything? I had I had one board tape, horrible, yeah. hard, terrible board tape, yeah. and I begged them to send me more, and they they never got around to it, or <laughs> or they they didn't have one, or didn't they didn't have one of the new show, yeah. um, so I pulled as much as I could from that, and our first show we went out to do, we open um we opened for Confederate Railroad. Oh my gosh. At a biker rally nice. in Wisconsin, maybe? I don't know, Illinois, Wisconsin, somewhere up north. And I, it was the first time I'd actually played a gig and walked off the stage and went, I just kill that. I just murdered that show. Yeah. I felt that confident. And I sang the first show. Yeah. I had my lyric sheet. You know, yeah. luckily they were very nice enough to say, yeah, you can have a music stand, not even an iPad, but a music stand yeah. with charts and lyrics. Yeah. You know, obviously we don't want that full time, but sure, you know, sure. first couple of shows, cool. Of course. So they were very, they're, there's, they've always been they, really easy. There's no, they didn't have to uh, no. spend time rehearsing or anything like that. No, no. Yeah. Um, so I did the show and I walked off stage and I went, man, that felt awesome. That's cool. Then Keith comes up to me and goes, well, you only messed up four times. We'll get better. <laughs> <laughs> Shit. <laughs> so that was the first show. And, you know, that's that mindset of us joking around like that has stayed for three years between mm-hmm. Keith and I. You know, mm-hmm. we can go each other and go up to each other and go, you know what? That just that sucked. Maybe do better next time. You know, I can say that to him, which most guys can't say to their boss. Right, right, But right. we have such a cool relationship that he's cool enough where I can do that. Yeah. And he just fires it right back. And that's our thing. Yeah. I despise doing drum solos. Mm. I'm not a chops guy. And anyone that knows me will tell you that. I'm I'm a meat and taters. I, I, I saw some cool stuff on your video, man. There, I, every <laughs> once in a while, I get a wild hair up my ass, and I'll yeah. I'll do something just totally that doesn't sound like me. Sometimes yeah. I'll nail it. Sometimes I won't. Most of the time, I won't. Yeah. But I can do something that sounds cool. But I hate having to solo because yeah. I haven't really tapped into that creative part of my brain, mm-hmm. and that's something that I want to work on. But. I got introduced three times in one night, and this happened three or four different shows to where I had to play yeah. three solos a night. <sighs> and we finally had a little talking about that, and I said, listen, guys, I you know, I don't feel like I'm doing anything to make the show better. Yeah. And then, you know, Heidi was like, you just not really like doing drum solos. I said, honestly, can I speak candidly? She goes, well, of course, always. I said, I fucking hate it. Yeah. She goes, okay, can yeah. you do one? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Do I feel like it's my best work every time I do it? Absolutely not. Do you do do you do something It's it's that's... it's not free form. It's it's over the click. It's in it's I get like somewhere between sixteen and thirty two bars, whatever I want to do. Okay. It's not I, I wished it was something rehearsed mm-hmm. and something that I could, you know, that was a little had a little bit of form to it. Yeah. It's not. 
Yeah. So it's just me completely shitting the bed for <laughs> about 30 seconds every night. In time, though. <laughs> Sometimes. <laughs> Most of the time, eh. Yeah, yeah. But, yeah. you know. I, I, I get it, man. And, and I think that sometimes it's just the nature of the type of music that we're drumming to and that sure. we, where we find ourselves finding work. Um, I'm in, in a similar boat where of course. the kind of music doesn't necessarily lend itself to improvising uh, the way other styles do, where you can kind of... We build experience over time, you know. It's 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 a. I don't like it either, man. Yeah. You know, especially when you see somebody that does it all the time, or maybe that's just their nature. Sure. And you're just like, dang on it. That's one of the reasons why I hate it because I can't do it. Exactly. Oh, I I completely <laughs> agree. No, and even Heidi will introduce me and say, you know, from Cedartown, Georgia, but like, he hates playing over a shuffle. He hates soloing over a shuffle. That's how she introduces me. <laughs> it's not. He's been with us three years. You know, he's the greatest drummer we've ever had. No, 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 none of that, no. which I would never want her to do that. Um, <laughs> if you ask me, Lee Kelly was, was, was the guy, uh, oh. before me. Um, which I, I know I, he played with I, Heidi. Did he? Oh, he the, played with Heidi. He didn't really play with, okay, with, with okay. The, I'm sure he played with some with Heidi and Keith on a couple of occasions, but, uh, yeah, I love Lee. Yeah. Um, he's a good dude. But she introduces me as he hates soloing over a shuffle, ladies and gentlemen. Will Eastwood, <laughs> you know him, which as totally the guy. sets my sets the mood. Of course, like ah, oh, people are like oh, okay, because nobody in the crowd's going to get that. You know, she just says it because she thinks it's going to make put a smile. Let's on watch my a face. guy who hates what he does right now. Yeah, let's watch a guy who hates his life for thirty seconds because. He is yet to be creative enough to come up with something bad at, like Donnie Marple esque. <laughs> I would love to be able to to do some of the stuff that him or, or, or Ben Caesar or just mm. some of the guys that 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 have got a bag of chops. Mm. Yeah, I have a little bag of chops. Yeah. It's more like a dime bag. <laughs> a dime bag. Of I have chops. a dime bag of chops. Yeah. Um, that's gonna be. But that's gonna be your quote. I right love there. it. Hey, can we, can we put that in big bold print, like off to the side. Of course, um, but it's. Uh, I'll put your episode out on uh, April twentieth. That's totally cool. Um, yeah, absolutely. So sorry, I had to think about that for two <laughs> seconds. Uh, how busy are you with them? I mean, how much are you out on the road? Um, la- I literally just sat down to do my taxes the other night at five a.m. because that makes sense. Um, sat down and I, last year we did, uh, luckily I'm, I'm, I've been asked to do all the acoustic stuff with them. So I take a little cocktail kit and, okay. and I, I am their third part harmony. So they like having me there to see. Cool. Yeah. Um, so last year we did 85 total with the acoustic stuff thrown in. Maybe we did maybe 35, 40 band dates. If that maybe 35, mm-hmm. not a, not a, not a, not a very strong year yeah. band wise. Okay. Um, the two years before, we did a little bit more. Okay, it's actually declined over the past three years because they've changed management, they've changed booking agents, they've changed everything, mm-hmm. and they're still trying to figure out how and revamp and rework it into something, you know, really awesome and, and that it, works. It was a trio in the it beginning, was a trio. and so now that it's a duo. That's kind of sounds like it's opening up the opportunity for you. To sing, I mean, to do that. Well, it has. I mean, since day one, they they said, "Okay, you're our third. You're the third harmony. You're just behind That's drums. Awesome, man. You're just playing drums." Yeah, which is fun when you have to sing a high five over Heidi <laughs> for ninety minutes. Um, <laughs> but it's fun. It works, and they're they're very unlike anybody else. Their harmonies they, they don't stick to one part. You know, Keith doesn't go, "Okay, I'm going to sing the low third. You take the high third whole song." Yeah. No, that would be too easy. Yeah, it jumps constantly. So it took several months to really get the harmonies yeah. where they were supposed to be because I wasn't used to doing that. Good, I love good harmonies, though, man. Oh, I do too. I mean, I can't, I can't sing at all. But it's like when I look at my collection of of different groups that I like, it's like, man, that, I like a. There's a lot of groups I like with just really good harmony. Sure. Um, why I'm a Rush fan, I have no idea because it's not about singing at all. Not even a little bit. Uh, Is it even about playing? I think it was about like odd, odd time. I don't know. I, I I know very very. Anybody that knows me will tell you I probably know the least about Rush in this entire town. Maybe so. I think my wife probably knows more about them than I would than, be than you do. Very willing to bet. So. <laughs> I'm talking about harmonies. I against grew up. her will, I'm sure. Yeah. Um. So, uh, what keeps you busy? 
then outside of that? I know we've mentioned Broadway. Sure. Um, um, and, and you have a session today. Is that with is we that have, with Trick it, it is. Okay. Yeah, we're doing a, uh, we, we actually tracked the session into last year, into December, and uh, Heidi had some stuff come up, so we couldn't do the vocals. So I got a text yesterday saying, hey, can you come and do background vocals tomorrow? Yeah. I said, well, I've got this really important podcast. <laughs> Yeah. By the way, this is the first podcast I've ever done in my life. Oh, come on. Uh, I was in radio for nine years before I moved yeah, here. Man. So I'm no That's stranger I'm to talking much, to in, your voice into a mic. Really well. oh, I'm doing my, my Kevin Murphy uh, pillow talk <laughs> voice. Uh, she said, I need you to come do back. I said, okay, I've got a podcast. It's actually kind of important. I, I really need to do that. Okay. She goes, cool. We'll just move it to 1.30. So um, we're doing that today. And luckily, we've done, I tracked backgrounds on their last album. Or I, EP, I should say. Okay. Um, but I've got to do a lot of studio stuff with them, which has been very, very cool. I played my first master session with them. Or, sorry, sang my first master session. Wes Little was uh, called in to, to do the okay. drum stuff, okay. which was supposed to uh, originally be all the band guys were going to track okay. and do the master session, which was going to be awesome for everybody. Yeah. Not only that would have been all of our first master sessions, because we're all young, Okay. the whole band. Yeah. There's not anybody... Except our keyboard player, he's like 50, but looks like he's 23, and I hate him for that. Um, I think I might. Well, I was I was older than you when I did it, Matt. I, when I did it, a Matt, you know, I've done very very few master sessions, but I think I was probably That's still in my, my mid 30s. You know, yeah. So well, you don't hear of a lot of people doing them a lot anymore. It's usually like just a, a handful of guys. Yeah, it's the Buddha yeah. and and yeah. Miles and yeah. Jerry Rowe, those guys, and that's right. that's your group now. Yeah. Um, but it was originally supposed to be the entire band. Well, two of the band guys left the week before we were supposed to go in and track. Ugh. So that screwed everything. So they yeah. were like, oh, "Okay, we'll just call call some 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 guys, uh, call some some a guys." And yeah, Wes Little came in and Brignadillo and you know Greenberg, all the all the the badass guys. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. it knocked me out of playing my first master session, which is fine. Mm. I, I I it's okay. You know, because yeah. they still asked me to come in and sing backgrounds. Yeah, yeah. And that check was nice. Yeah. I want to do that for the rest of my life. Like, <laughs> I I need to do that. Uh, but the it was a lot of easy. fun. I, I walked in. I, I don't even know. I actually I brought headphones for my session today because I know the studio I'm working at. I, I love to use my own. I don't even think I brought headphones. Yeah. I didn't bring coffee. I just walked in. Yeah. But the, what what headphones do you use? What do, what do you like um, to use? Depending on what I'm doing. Okay. Uh, if I'm doing vocals or if I'm recording a bass part at my house, um, I have fallen in love with uh, by, uh, Bayer Dynamic. Hmm. I think it's HD 770 Pro, okay. something like that. 770. What about, what about drums? What drums? No, I mean as far as Oh, as far as track? Uh, I don't. I use ears. Okay. I, I despise tracking drums with headphones. Me too. It's a it's an isolation thing because I am one of the very few people, and I've recently become okay with saying this. I hate the sound of acoustic drums. Hmm. It's the weirdest thing. Hmm. I've played with in ears all my life, and I've become so accustomed to hearing drums through a microphone mm -hmm. with a little bit of reverb, some EQ. Yeah, that's how I love to hear drums. Yeah, I love to hear drums through a PA. I hate going to see a show. <clears throat> I hate to go to like, you know, where family wash or exit in, mm -hmm. and you just hear the drums off the stage. Mm -hmm. Like put them in the PA. Yeah, make yeah. them make them boom. Right. That's well, what drew me certain, to music. Yeah, especially certain kinds of music. I can say that there was one year where I did maybe three gigs, like you know, some songwriter gigs, and like I was playing at the basement and stuff. Yeah. Where you know, those were the only ones I did without ears. Yeah, and I've mentioned this before. I even talked to Steve Smith about it because he was playing with ears for the nice first name drop. time. Thank nice you. Name you drop. Like that? that was the I think it was the first one of the podcast, first big one of the podcast. I'm kidding. But I'm bringing it up because here's a guy that we all know who started his professional career in 1974, and for the first time last year played with in ears. Right, and, right, right. And many of the our uh, our, our, our f friends and. Um, Compadres, whatever uh, you know, the, all the in the within the uh, the Nashville community use ears. Um, I, I I'm always now um, conscious of the fact that half of our episodes are interviewed by Zach Albetta, who has uh, spent uh, many years in the jazz world 
and Kansas City and Los Angeles, and now he's in Atlanta. He's doing a lot more than jazz now that he's been in Atlanta, but his community has grown from that, and he's been interviewing a lot of drummers, and it's like his world has become a lot different than my world. My world started a lot in jazz in Ohio and stuff. When I moved down here 16 years ago, everything got bigger, cymbals, sticks, blah, blah, blah. Sure. My point is... I, I, it's like the way we approach the instrument stylistically, you know, we're, we're just, it's just more electronic. It's more, um, it's, it's, I guess I hate to say this, but it's less nuanced. Sure. So sometimes having those ears, here's the thing I ran into though. Here's the problem I ran into with using nothing but ears, um, was my right hand was getting very heavy on the hi-hat. And I was overplaying the hi hat, and I wasn't learning how to mix myself. True. Now, granted, I didn't always have the same engineer on the road. I didn't That's always fair. have somebody that knew how to mix, and that is the danger that I you can get into with with ears. Now, in the studio, you can tweak it. It's sure, in most studios. But the the last year, the band I was out traveling with. We were doing a lot smaller venues, older crowds. We had to watch our volume. It wasn't big outdoor things. It wasn't bars. It wasn't where I could just play as loud as I want, and somebody was still cranking it up from there. I had to watch my volume. So I started to use a wedge again. All of a sudden, I discovered stuff about my left hand that I could do that I wasn't doing as well anymore. Right. I was overplaying the hi-hat. You know, I discovered this stuff like... Now, granted, I don't have the best ears, the best in ear sure okay so i wasn't hearing everything and i'm sure that makes a big difference absolutely and i didn't have an engineer that was able to mix me that was the same sometimes we mixed ourselves we had our own stuff sure it was a smaller i love mixing myself so pitch me your or give me your pitch for you know ears overriding acoustic drums well, I'm actually kind of going through what you just described because now I have the okay. So the gig I was talking about that was kind of getting a little bumpy. Mm-hmm. Uh, I play um, this this bar, and there are no ears for anybody. It's yeah. wedges. If I'm lucky to get a wedge yeah. every time I come in, because there's there's three mixes. Yeah, and there's five of us on stage. Right. Uh, keys, guitar, bass, singer, drums, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. and most of the time I have to help sing. So I'll get a wedge. Yeah. It's the first gig that I've. It's the first regular gig that I've ever done to where I had to use wedge, no yeah, click. Yeah, I don't have a click. It's the first gig I've never used a click. Yeah. My click is my my fail safe. It's my way of knowing I'm 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 doing okay. And if I could interrupt you for a second, <clears throat> yeah. I think this is interesting because because you're 29 years old, right? Yeah. And so it's interesting because like this is there's a generation now that has grown up. I mean, my first session was a two inch tape. Okay. And then dads. <laughs> and, then, and so it's like we rarely played, like ears wasn't even a thing. So I'm th- this is interesting sure. because we have this generation that's growing up playing using ears. And uh, there it is. <clears throat> you're using ears and you're using clicks and stuff like that. That's stuff that we never used. Right. You know. So, anyways, I'm sorry. I interrupted. No, no, it's it's never something that I, I didn't plan on using tracks when I first moved to town ten years ago. Yeah. Which I think actually next month uh, will be ten years, which is a really weird thought. Yeah. Um, but I am learning all over again. I'm learning something new. I'm learning how to mix myself in a live room with mm-hmm. with nothing but maybe some plugs in mm-hmm. you know some light plugs because it, 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 it it's, it's a very quiet gig but it's still loud because yeah. our guitar player is an asshole and he likes <laughs> to play loud he does a very good job at playing but he's he doesn't like to play quietly uh but i'm learning how to not play with a click how to listen yeah how to listen to my bass player yeah. on my left mm-hmm. who's a fantastic bass player listen to the keys player who's an older guy and who's played with everybody under the sun Mm-hmm. And who's one of the best at what he does? So I'm trusting their timing mm-hmm. to keep me on time, mm-hmm. and vice versa. So I, I'm learning how to be a musician. Yeah. Whether I'm on that gig next week or not, we'll see. <laughs> uh, I still don't know, but it's it's total. I mean, I've I've been doing it for three months, four months with the same singer. Uh-huh. Um, so it's really it's 
it's been a challenge because I've never done that. I've never walked into a gig and somebody goes, okay, here's a wedge. You guys have fun. Yeah. Yeah. It's interesting. It's, it's, and it's totally kind of mind fucked me because I'm, yeah. I, and I'm learning how to set a wedge so it doesn't kill the guy next to me. Yeah. Right. How I hear what I, just enough of what I want to hear uh-huh. to get by without being a pain in the ass, mm-hmm. which I am <laughs> because I was an engineer before I was a drummer. Yeah. Uh, right. And we can get into that later if you yeah. want, but, um, it's a whole new learning curve. That's what I'm saying. I mean, I, I, it's it's backwards. It, it, it's it is backwards. It, it's when backwards I, for most people. When I first started using ears, I loved it. I mean, I felt like I, my ears weren't ringing at the end of the night. I could control things in a way that I could never do it before. Right. Um, I was playing. I was playing more. I would say forceful, but just with more confidence and and louder. But then kind of that reverse engineering of having a gig where the first time I did that on a regular basis was it was two wedges up front and one, the tweeter was blown mm-hmm. and I was up against a glass. It was the old mm-hmm. Layla's thing. Oh, I yeah. was doing every Tuesday we were in town, I was playing there and I'm like, I eventually got down to a kick snare floor, one, a, a crash ride, hi hat, just one crash. And I started, I, at first I'm like, oh, this sounds awful and, and just uh, things don't sound right. I adjusted myself to the room and I fell in love with that it's game. It's great, isn't it? Yeah. I was playing uh, dynamically and I missed that part of playing because sure. when you're doing a lot of gigs with ears, you're just going all out. That's a good word. You just, uh, d- d- dynamically. Yeah. It's, it's something that not a lot of younger people or even uh, 30s, 40s people, they don't get that anymore because music has become so they're they're not asked to do it it's not no. that they're not do it's not that they're not choosing to do it i think that's the, the demands of certain Man, pop I'm, styles is that's better put thank you you know what i'm saying it's yeah, not no, calling it's, up for it no and i think that that's that's something else that you need to count as in your bag sure you know bag and of that's tricks. not even just drummers that's everybody on stage <laughs> Right. You know, it doesn't just apply to me or the next guy coming in after me. But everybody else sucks because they have a volume knob. And yeah. so can you just play quieter? Sure. My hands don't move. My hands don't change. Yeah, it affects the tone and maybe sure. sometimes the attack. But all they got to do is just roll it off. Sure. We've got to adjust ourselves. If they're nice. If they're nice. If they're nice. <laughs> if they're hashtag pro. Um, no, it's it's a battle. It's hard because you can't, like in this particular bar, it's in a hotel. So you can't just go balls to the wall yeah. and play, you know. Can we say what it is or do you want to leave that out? I'll know next week. Okay. Right. Uh, it's, it's, it's at Bar Lines in the Omni Hotel. I don't okay. mind saying that at all. And mm-hmm. it's a great gig. They pay you a great base pay just to show up. Mm-hmm. They feed you. It's, it's the easiest gig in the world in town to me. Mm-hmm. Easiest bar gig I'll ever play. But it's hard at the same time. Yeah. Um, I forgot where I was going with all that, but yeah, there it is. Can I want to talk briefly about? I've got some questions. Yeah, uh, we've, go. we've interviewed um, guys who've worked on Broadway. I've worked on Broadway, um, but it's usually it's it's been somewhat limited. The band that I just left had uh, some regular gigs there. Um, yeah, um, and then it, it you guys got were kind of badass. At one point in time, I think it was, it was, it was, it was, and I always enjoyed it and I miss it so much. It was very, it was one of the very few gigs to where if I was just, if, when I first moved to town, I would just go downtown on my nights off because I mm-hmm. thought that's what people do. Yeah. And I would learn, I would listen to, listen to the older players. I would sit and listen, I'd grab a beer mm-hmm. or a Coke because I was 20 when I first moved here, so I didn't <laughs> drink yet. So I would grab yeah. a Coke yeah. and I would sit there for eight hours and mm-hmm. find the guy mm-hmm. that I related to. Yeah musically and I would sit and learn everything that I possibly could. But when I would walk around, there was very few people that I wanted to really go listen to. Mm. I had a, I had a handful and you guys were one of them. Oh, cool. Yeah. It, it, that band, uh, the band is conti- it's, it's changed a lot over time and it's adjusted and it's yeah. adapted to the needs of the gigs that it's, that it's been working towards. Um, and it, it hasn't really fed my soul in the same way. Um, I get it. And so, um, again, uh, I just left last week, and I wish those guys and all the new players and my friend Josh Berkheimer is taking over playing drums for me, cool. and I wish those guys the best of luck, and uh, they'll continue to work as long as they want to. But 
the 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 gigs that we were doing then the because for those who don't know lower broad in nashville is they're three three and a half hours straight if not more Mm -hmm. of playing no breaks no sets you don't play 45 15 off or you know you are going at it and it's I think it's exhausting at first, but once you get used to it, you start to crave it. You kind of get in the zone. Yeah, I liked it, um, but but go, sorry. but go, but to, to but to make a living, you have to do it a lot. Oh yeah, and there's drummers. I don't know how they do it. Are doing two shifts called doubles. Yeah. And, uh, that. So tell me about your experience down there. What you like, what you hate about it. Any advice that you might have for somebody that's entertaining that as a Run, run, <laughs> run. Uh, no, it's. I've heard a lot of bigger play, yeah, bigger players, smaller players, people with media max. They'll knock it and man, I, I don't, I don't. You know, I think that's stupid. You know, mm-hmm. I'll, I'll never, I'll never play Broadway. Yeah. Well, while you're on your couch eating Raymond noodles because yeah. your touring gigs off for the winter. Yeah. I'm either gonna go play or I'm gonna go have dinner with a friend and you know. I'm going to enjoy myself because I made money. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Do I want to be down there full time? Absolutely not. I yeah. want to tour. I want to see the world. I sure. want to have fun. Mm-hmm. It has become, I started playing down there about three years after I moved here. Uh, I was lucky enough to get, I was thrown in to a band of very seasoned players, all older people mm-hmm. um, that were like a Friday. Uh, I think we played four nights a week. And they were kind of the ringer band for this bar. They were the badass guys that made the most money. Mm -hmm. And they were Mm well-rehearsed. Everybody knew what everybody was going to do at every time. And I got thrown in. Yeah. I was clueless. I knew the songs. Yeah. You know, I had already done some some road stuff, some, you know, Midwest, northern bar, club, casino, nasty, grueling gigs. So I knew the songs. Yeah. But I learned more on that gig about being a musician hmm. and about listening. Yeah. Even though I, I had the I had the ears, uh, um, but I learned how to listen for the parts and really how to gr- try to learn how to groove because hmm. they were all about groove. They weren't about flashy bullshit. Mm-hmm. They didn't want that. Mm-hmm. So I was like, great. I don't know how to do any of that. <laughs> I don't think. But you know, I remember one time the bass player turned around and said, "Man, groove the hats." Just, just groove the hats. Hmm. It took like five years to figure out what the hell he was talking about. What was he talking about? I still don't know. <laughs> <laughs> no, I, I think I think I was in my what I call my Rich Redmond phase, which I love. Rich, mm-hmm. Rich is yeah. for what Rich does, he is the best. Yeah, he, for there, sure. There is no other Rich Redmond. Yeah, and I I think I was still new to town, and I was in that mentality of, man, okay, I have to play like Rich Redmond to 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 get a gig, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. or I have to play like Sean Paddock, who I am a very big fan of. Mm-hmm. So I was just. You know, I would either just completely start bashing the hats, you know, Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. they didn't want that. I didn't know that. They just wanted some cool, finessier kind of just not so harshness about it. Mm -hmm. And it took forever to figure that out. And I kept the, I basically, I came on the gig as a sub. The drummer went out with an artist for the year and then they got called back the next year. Even in the wintertime, they worked. So that was that became my gig, even though I was a sub, for a year and a half. And I made the most money on that Broadway gig than I've ever made in my entire life. I still have money saved from those gigs yeah. that, I've, that I haven't spent yet somehow. I don't know how, because I have an addiction to, to buying drums. <laughs> um, but I look at it as I get paid to go play with friends. Yeah, I get paid to almost kind of rehearse to Mm -hmm. keep or not i won't say rehearse but keep my chops up yeah you know i can go our last trick pony show was first of december i think Mm -hmm. we were in california or vegas or somewhere Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. we haven't played a show since then and probably aren't going to play a show for another month or two right right i don't want to sit at home i've got you know i've got my kits at home i have a studio set up and i have you know everything i could i could possibly need to practice at home yeah um 
But practicing at home and yeah. performing are yeah. completely two it, different things. Practicing at home. You know, my buddy Steve Smith you. mentioned something about. No, oh sorry. yeah, okay, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, Ben Caesar can tell you all the. No, I'm kidding. Um, no, I, I I practice at home not as much as I probably should. Um, I'm just getting settled into a new house with yeah. uh, with uh, a really really awesome roommate who loves to practice, and so I listen to him practice and go, man, I I suck because he's getting on and all this different stuff, but. I love playing downtown because I get to play with people. Yeah. And people, and, uh, most of the time, people that I really enjoy playing That's with. a thing you can't duplicate in the no, practice room. not at all. You can play along to drumless versions of stuff all you want to. Yeah. And you can record yourself, and yeah. you can listen back and go, okay, well, I was a little head, or I was, okay, that was in the pocket, or I'm laying that back too far. That recording's not going to change, no matter how many times you record over it or practice to it. Mm-hmm. It's not going to change. Yeah. You go from bar one to bar two, and you have a totally different band. You can play the same exact songs, the same three hours of music. Yeah. Nothing is even remotely the same. Right, right, right. So it teaches you how to adapt. Yeah, yeah. And that's something that I had to learn very quickly when I first got yeah. thrown into the playing right. mix. Is How do you guys end this Broadway standard? Yeah. You know, how do, what tempo do you play this? Do you guys song? play this the Broadway way or the record way? Right. Or do you have My, your own arrangement? Do you know Alex Stevens, the bass player? Yes, I yeah. love Alex. Yeah, Alex is oh, awesome. Oh, so great. Um, he, uh, he's always like, there's the right way, there's the wrong way, and then there's it's Broadway. The Broadway. Yeah. 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 Uh, I haven't seen him in a long time. The, I don't think it's fair that people talk down about those who talk down about Broadway. Um, I think that um, if it doesn't work for you, then that's fine. Move on. Move on. Right. Exactly. Just go. Um, there, uh, I've had some great experiences down there. I can say I'm not gonna, oh, yeah. you know, it, it, and I like the, um, I love to play and, uh, I need to perform in order to keep myself in shape. Absolutely. And so it, it does all that stuff. It's not the, uh, four song set. It's not the 20 minute set on yeah. tour with so-and-so being the opener for the opener. Um, if you get lucky enough to play with your best friends, yeah. like, over time, I've become very selective as to what gigs I'll take down there. Yeah. As any sm- as any as any player that's played down there more than three years will tell you, you kind of have to because the I think and going back. How to about what if you're said, starting out? If you're starting out, take every gig you can possibly get your hands on. Get yourself thrown into stuff that you're gonna your brain's gonna hurt. Mm-hmm. It's the only way you're gonna get better. Yeah. And I had to learn that the hard way. I've done gigs to where I knew zero songs yeah, yeah whether they were funk tunes or pop tunes or rock stuff that i did i it was the most uncomfortable three and a half hours of my life but i walked away going man that was fun what about those gigs where you are the dominant kind of experienced musician and you're like these guys all suck yeah we've Please all had nobody those. walk in that i know <laughs> yeah well, uh, we've all had those and i've had plenty of those and i you know I will always feel like the new guy in town. Again, mm. I've been here almost ten years. I don't know if that feeling's ever going to go away because mm. I, I and I, I've all, I've thought this for a long time. But I, I will always feel like the young guy, mm-hmm. even though I get to hang out with some really awesome dudes that are much yeah. older and much yeah. more seasoned and yeah. way more hashtag pro than me. Um, I still feel like the baby, which is fine yeah. because that just means that. My beard hasn't gotten gray yet, and I one, still have some time. That'll change one day. I know. I'm, still, I'm finding gray hairs all the time, actually. Um, but to adapt to playing with newer people that aren't as experienced, yeah, you just have to sit back and let them make their mistakes. Hmm. You're going to get mad. You're going to get frustrated. You're going to want to throw shit. I've hmm. wanted to throw a cymbal stand at a bass player before because he just was all over the place and had no clue what he was doing. At the end of the day, you can't do that. Yeah, I'm working on being this nicer guy thing. This, this not an asshole, and it's really hard. It's honestly harder than quitting smoking, which I haven't um, gotten too good at. But you have to learn to just keep your mouth shut and let people make their mistakes. You know, if you're friends with that person, maybe say something. Maybe yeah. don't. Yeah. If they're cool enough to where you can go, hey man, listen, enjoyed playing with you last night, but maybe listen to some. Of the stuff, yeah, you know, yeah. you're kind of all over the place on this. If you're cool enough with the person, if they're a right prick, let them let them go on yeah. and think they're the shit. And mm-hmm. guess who's going to get called back for the gig next time? Yeah, not that person. Hmm. But I do believe that that playing Broadway is it's it it keeps my chops, and I say chops very very non seriously. It, it keeps my practice up and it lets me sing. 
it, it gets me out of the house. I believe it. But it, it's also paid my bills. Yeah. My uncle was a member of the Atlanta Symphony Orchestra, played okay. violin. Uh, I spent a lot of time with him when I was young. He had a ukulele. First thing I ever picked up. Yeah. He taught me to play uh, some old Western, you know, he was an old cowboy. So yeah. he taught me to play these old cowboy songs on a ukulele, which moved into his six string gut string guitar, which was way too big for me to play as a, as a little five, six year old kid. You know, I had little hands, but I was naturally drawn to it. Yeah. So, and I, I've actually never mentioned this lady, but I had a, a, a teacher, Miss Lundy, in school, uh, yeah. in elementary school, who was the pianist in my church growing up. She saw something musically in me, and she started yanking it. She 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 pulled it out of me. Mm-hmm. You know, uh, I'm going to get a lot of laughs for that comment, and I'm sorry. That, <laughs> I'm just really sorry that it came out that way. She's a gorgeous woman, um, but I, she kind of put, she opened the door for me musically. Mm-hmm. But my uncle had a lot to do with it. Um, with the guitar, which I don't find myself to be a very good guitar player. I'll sit and pick right at home I'll, mm. to relax myself. You know, it's, mm-hmm. it's very, it's very soothing to me. Um, uncle taught me guitar that kind of opened up the door for me, you know, not singing. Um, mm. the teacher taught me how to sing. Okay. Um, and she also gave me some piano lessons when I was a little bit younger. Um, that for some reason turned into, I will never forget my my dad and I went to Sam's Club. I think I was eight. Mm-hmm. Went to get some groceries and just some general stuff at Sam's Club because that's what father and son do. Apparently, <laughs> I begged him to go. I was like, I want to go to Sam. I've never been to this magical land of shit. I've never been to this <laughs> magical land of of lots of things. That's so he right. took I need, me. I need two gallons of nutmeg. Yeah. Ex- <laughs> As we walked in the front door, there it was. A drum set yeah. set up in Sam's Club. What do I do? I'd never played a drum set. Yeah. I go over and I just start beating the piss out of it. Yeah. And I begged my dad. Yeah. It was like 250 bucks. It was a little cheapy beginner set. Mm-hmm. But to me, to this day, yeah. it was still the best sounding drum set I've ever owned. I bet. I've ever owned. I bet. Huh. Were you using I'm, ears then? No, 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 okay. no. I was eight. <laughs> I don't even think I had like put the Casio on, headphones. The mix at eight. was great. Uh, it was yeah, the first time I had I my own engineer, my own writer. It was the damnedest thing. I begged. I begged my dad and turned begged. the click on. Yeah, I, I begged and begged and begged. A friend buy this drum set. And he goes, "Your mother will kill me." Absolutely not. Like I want you to have it. I, you know. Yeah. I will get you one one day. But if I buy this today, your mother's going to kill me. Next day, I come home, mom. Please. Can I have this drum set? Um, under no circumstance. Too loud. Neighbors will, will bitch. Yeah. Okay. Hey, Dad. Mom said it was okay. <laughs> Next day, we go back to Sam's Club. Yeah. I come home with my first drum set. Nice. Shit hits the fan when I get home with it, but, you know. It's too late. It's too late. Yeah. You know, dad took the ass chewing and maybe that's why they got divorced. I'm not sure. Cause it wasn't too long after that. Um, but I got my first drum set when I was eight, I beat and banged on it. I put towels over the heads to make them sound like the mm-hmm. guys that I wanted them to sound like. Yeah. Um, did you have a teacher? Did you ever? Um, no, I've learned with the exception of my uncle teaching me some like GC and DNA minor on a guitar. Okay. I've taught myself everything by ear. Okay. There was a couple of guys. There was a guy that, um, I grew up with his daughter. His name was Steve. Um, he let me come over one day and play his electronic rolling kit. He had a nice, like, gorgeous, like, the, the works. He had all the pads, mm-hmm. four toms, five toms, with all the cymbals. And he goes, man, you're, and I was still, I was, like, 12, maybe, 11, 12. And he goes, man, you're really good mm. to be your, your age. Mm-hmm. He goes, you can actually keep a beat, and you kind of know what you're doing. Mm-hmm. Um, so I did that. I th- well, I think when I was 13, 14. Teenish, um, my granddad bought me my first drum kit, my first real, oh nice, real, not clunker drum kit, which I still have, by the way, and I will never sell. Oh, cool, uh, it sits in cases in my garage. All right. There, I actually I cleaned them all up last year and polished them. Yeah. But I, he bought me my first real kit, so I played on it, yeah, and got into this indie rock thing, mm-hmm. this Christian indie rock thing back in Georgia. And a lot of my influence there came out of a guy named Scotty Lockridge, hmm. uh, who was another drummer in my hometown. Like he was the badass in my hometown. Like every drummer wanted to be Scotty Lockridge. Hmm. 
uh, Scotty wound up passing away three, four years ago, mm-hmm. five years ago from a, 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 a he fa- he had a seizure and fell in his head. Oh, wow, and, wow. But he was everybody's influence, like yeah. everybody wanted. And he was they were actually the band was successful. They they signed with a label up here and. Uh, we're on that thing with like Decipher Down and Family Force Five and all the big Christian mm-hmm. and rock acts. Was that so, uh, what was the name of the band? High Flight Society. Yeah. Okay. That's that's right. I, was, um, I, I had that written down. Did you really? Yeah. That's now, funny. did you did you play with those guys? I played with them once. Okay. They. Uh, I know that you uh, on your Facebook page you you mentioned that and the I do and the experience. Of I need that to being, I need to go check my Facebook. I, the, I forget what I was on there about being a, it being a big no. I deal got at the time it, at the time it was the biggest show I'd ever played. Yeah. I think I was I was eighteen maybe. Yeah. At this time I, think I was. We, had, I was we have those moments that like we you oh, thousands absolutely. of gigs yeah. over many many years, but there's always these point in times that are just monumental. Drummer's wife got hit by a car walking out of a Taco Bell. Uh, oh, at the time, Taco at Bell's the time, very bad at the time, you. his wife. Uh, he called me and goes, man, hey, man, Rhonda got hit by a car walking out of the Taco Bell. Can you sub a show for me this weekend? And I'm like, you've got to be kidding me. He's, man, I'm not making this up. And Scotty's just the countryest old bumpkin you've ever met. And I loved him to death. I was like, are, are, is the, are the band guys cool? Like, you know, yeah. I, I've obviously listened to you guys. And I used to go mix front of house for him from time to time. So okay. I knew the music. I never played it. Okay. So the band guys that night came to my house and rehearsed okay. this hour long show which started which was the best and worst gig I've ever played. <laughs> they started out with uh Foo Fighters um uh it was my hero. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, dun, 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 bah, dun, dun, but they did it way faster than the oh, record. Geez. It was the intro to their whole show. Yeah. So they had, you know, they had a lighting show that went along with their yeah. show. So Foo Fighters I would, I would come too fast out, anyways too. I would Oh no, this was Faster, faster than, than that. <laughs> it was uncomfortably fast for my 18-year-old right foot that didn't go that fast. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I come out on stage. We rehearse. We go to Ohio to do this show at this church. 5,000 screaming kids. I'd never been in front of a crowd this big in my life. Yeah. I have to walk out on stage first, totally blacked out stage. I'm playing Scotty's drum set because they wanted to use it. They love the way it sounded. Okay, cool. Yeah. I think I took my kick pedal, maybe. Yeah. Um. Turn the click on. Dun 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 whatever the groove was. Yeah. My right foot cramped. Uh I blew the entire and like the bass player would walk out, the light would come on. The guitar player would you know, it was that kind of a staggered intro. Uh-huh. My right foot cramped in front of five thousand screaming people. I'll never forget it. I wanted to cry. Yeah. But I picked myself back up. I simplified the kick pattern for a mm-hmm. couple of bars. Mm-hmm. I let the cramp go away. Yeah. And then we played the show. Yeah. The, after that, the show was rocking. Yeah. I might have had a flub, a couple of flubs here and there. Mm-hmm. But it was the greatest and worst show all at the I same get time. It, man. Because it was my first big break. Mm-hmm. And I blew it within 15 seconds of being <laughs> on stage. Made up for it in the end, hopefully. Yeah. You sure, know. Sure. Um but uh, so that was really cool. So that Scotty was a big influence for me. Yeah. Um, other, I mean, as far I'm very unlike anybody probably who's moved to town at the age of 20. I didn't grow up on Neil Neil Pert and Alex Van Halen yeah. and those guys. I didn't know who those guys were till I moved to town. We had yeah. country radio yeah. in Cedar Town, Georgia. No, no, you're not. That's, no, and, and I think there's there's definitely examples of people that that uh, uh, have had that same experience. For sure, I would love to meet him because everybody David, like David Black. Well, David and I know Tucker. Tucker is a little shit because he got everything. Yeah, when he, was younger. No, he did. You know, he did. He got the bluegrass, the country, the rock, the, the everything. Right, right. I didn't have that. We listened yeah. to country radio. That's what my parents brought me up on. That's what I DJed for nine years yeah. as a radio personality. So that's what I knew. I knew the sounds of Eddie Bayers, Paul Lyme, Lonnie Wilson. Oh, and um, um, Larry London. I knew the country guys. I, I I didn't know who they were. And and there's another guy who was a guest on here early on, and his name is escaping me, but he grew up in this studio. Mark Beckett. Beckett. Yeah. Mark Beckett. Oh yeah. Yeah. Another example He's, of somebody that's, that goes. That's that's Eddie his, Bears Jr. Yeah. I, he goes. He goes. My three favorite drummers are Eddie Bears, Eddie Bears, and Eddie, Eddie Bears. Bears. Yeah, I remember that. Tell me quickly about. Your engineering experience? Uh, engineering. Um, I actually moved to town to be an engineer, producer, studio oh, wow. studio stuff. Okay. That changed very quick. 
um, I, 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 I moved out of um, necessity or out of desire? um no out of just coincidence I before I moved I had a fa- that wasn't I had one a, of the options I had a family friend <laughs> that worked at a publishing company that somebody my parents knew went to high school with uh-huh. they haven't talked to her in thirty years yeah but called her I got her number through some friends and called her and said hey my son wants to move to Nashville can we come up and and meet and you know give him some advice so she found out I wanted to do engineer so she said bring some some songs that you've done at home. Okay, cool. We came to Nashville, stayed for a couple of days, wound up meeting with the president and CEO at the time of this publishing entertainment management company. Like it was an all in one kind of Jeez. kind of house. Yeah. We go to lunch, we talk, have some laughs, come back to his office and go, come on, let's go, let's go talk. I told me and my mother and her name was Jerry. And this, this president went into this office and sat for an hour and a half and just, just talked about, you know, what it would take. Yeah. He goes, let me, I want, I want to, the president saying, I want to hear some of the stuff you've done. So I gave him my CD, and this is just stuff that I had I had mixed and recorded drums on. It wasn't me singing. I think I might have played a track. I had like a karaoke version of me singing. Okay. Um, said, you don't need to go to school for this. I was going to go to SAE and do mm-hmm. my engineering degree. Right. I'd already got accepted and everything. Okay. Because you you're going to blow $18,000 if you go to school for this. Mm-hmm. This is pretty good stuff. Why don't you move to town and come shadow some of our sessions? Mm-hmm. You know, if we find you a job, cool. But just come and shadow our sessions, pick up some tips and tricks, and just learn from that and save yourself some money. Yeah. My mother was like, absolutely, yep, yep, that's money I don't have to pay. Okay, thank you. <laughs> so it, it was uh, – it happened like that, and I moved. And I went straight to Applebee's and got a job as I'd never served a table in my life. I know how to serve tables. I still know how to serve tables. But the first week I moved, I went to find a job. And I saw the now hiring at Applebee's on Thompson Lane from Guitar Center. Yeah. Applied, worked there two days. The president calls me the third day and goes, hey, Will, um, this is blah, 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 Cherry Hart. I, I've got a – we have a front desk job open um, yeah. if you want to come in um, in a button down and some jeans starting tomorrow at 9 a.m. Thank you so much. I'll see you. I took my apron off and handed it to the guy and said, I'm sorry. I got a job on Music Row. Right. And he goes, man, I get it. Go. Yeah. go. Sure. I'm not mad. Go. Do do your thing. Yeah. So those, that started. And then I chatted their sessions, which I got to meet guys like Brian Fullen, Scott Williamson, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. who are guys that I now really look up to. Mm-hmm. Scott Williamson's a beast. Mm. Um. I think I might. I don't know if I got to shadow him. Oh, I shadowed with Greg Morrow. Who at the time, I had no clue who he was. Yeah. And I left that session going, that's the guy. That's <laughs> the guy I want to play like. Yeah. So I did that, which in turn led to me um, doing some live audio stuff, live front of house stuff at some clubs in town, which led to me doing some studio stuff. And I actually helped, uh, wound up helping uh, kind of run an engineer studio in, in uh, uh, West Nashville. Okay. Um Magmatone, I think was the name of it. It was a nice little building. Mm-hmm. Um, but they, he kind of gave me free reign to do whatever I wanted to do. Awesome. Um, so I did some stuff there for a year and a half, two years. Then they finally shut down because of lack of business. I hope it wasn't because of me. Um, <laughs> no, I mean, the studios are been, have been struggling for a long yeah, time. Well, it, yeah, and it wasn't a big studio. It was yeah. it was a very small, because non-commercial, like it was just hanging on. Yeah, I bet. Um, I bet. So I did that, and... I was playing at the same time, kind of, you know, around the same, around the schedule that I had. So I would do Broadway gigs or mm-hmm. do little shitty club dive bar gigs, whatever, VFWs, whatever, mm-hmm. you know, I could make money at. And that's been my thing. I I don't want to not be hireable. Yeah. I wear a lot of hats because I want a job. You have to. I want to, I want to, I don't not like making money. Did I say that right? I want to make money. <laughs> I don't like not making money. I don't not want to make money. Yeah. Um, um, so, uh, uh, yeah. I mean, how much are you engineering now? Live or studio now? Now, not. I don't. Um, I'll engineer live some if like a club calls me. Hey, can you come sub tonight? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. I got the night you, off. Uh, are you? Is that going to be part of the mix? Or are you still? Is that? Still I don't. Something you. I have a passion for mixing live stuff because I like making things sound the way I think they should sound. Mm-hmm. That's every engineer. Every yeah. engineer thinks they have the you perfect guitar so. tone in their I head, so. or you know, every engineer thinks, "Well, I know how to make that kick drum sound like a kick drum." Ninety-five percent of the engineers that have mixed me have no idea. Hmm. No, are you a drummer? No, I'm an engineer. Okay, then maybe let's let's work on this, and let me tell you how I want it to sound. Mm-hmm. 
Um, but I, I don't do a lot of engineering anymore. I have a home studio set up. It's not great, but it's enough to let me do e files, e sessions if I want. Um, well, what I'm, I'm getting not at doing is doing a whole lot of engineering. It's most I'm mostly playing. What I'm getting at is is where do you see yourself in three, five, ten? Hopefully years? with a job. Hopefully I haven't pissed anybody off <laughs> that bad. What's what's um, what would be your in game job? In game, uh, I want to tour. Okay. I want to play the sheds. I want to play the arenas. I want to play yeah. drums. Yes. Yes, drums. I want to throw that out right now. Everybody thinks I'm a bass player. I have I have drummers who are like, man, I saw you playing bass. Like, I'd love to get. No, 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 no. That was because they had an emergency gotcha. situation, and I filled in on a last minute thing. Yeah. Yes, it's fun. No, I don't want to do it full time. Somebody actually told me there was a very big touring uh, act. I won't say big. They're medium sized touring act. That I think they're kind of big because they tour and they play really big shows. Yeah. They said, hey, man, I want to let you know your name got thrown in the hat to play bass for this artist. I'm like, oh, no, 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 no. No, pull it out. Pull it out of the hat. No, there's no fucking way I'm going to do that. <laughs> then I thought, I was like, well, what if they hire me? Because, I mean, I play pocket bass. I don't play slap bass. I don't know yeah. any, I don't know how to do any of that crap. I can play the song. And that like I play drums. Hey, I play the song. A friend of mine who's an, an incredible guitar player and, and a great bass player, too, uh, got asked to audition to play keyboards with Taylor Swift yeah, about six years ago. And he entertained the idea and like worked on stuff and then thought, I can't do this. Yeah. <laughs> I can't do this. One last thing I want yeah. to cover. Circus Bear. Okay. By the way, I've been staring at your, your bears, your pandas ass on your coffee mug this My, entire my- time. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, thanks for that. That's the panda. Oh, that's funny. That's the panda. You have mug. a panda mug. I have I, a. I have a monkey mug. You have a monkey mug. I, I also have a monkey mug. I have a monkey I, mug. I have a monkey mug. I have many. Uh, do you have? No, let me ask you this. Do you have a? Do you have a coffee mug hierarchy, where like when you look at what's clean? Oh well, this is my favorite mug. I have. To oh, absolutely. Have. Everybody. That's has my monkey it. mug. His name's Marshall. Yeah. See. Yeah. Everybody his has arm it. comes out of the cup and reaches up onto the cup that's, to the form yeah, the handle. That's what. Why well, it's the same series as this. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Man, it came people, from Pier One, didn't it? I, probably knows probably probably um, TJ Max maybe Circus Bear started out. Thank you to Kevin Murphy. Um, <laughs> it it started out as a complete joke. We were at ML Rose and I was eating hot wings because uh, I'm a hot wing fanatic and yeah. uh, I was eating hot wings. Had sauce all over my hands, all over my face when my phone rang. <laughs> so I did it with anybody. What anybody with hot sauce in their hands would do? I, I I flipped it with my pinky and I threw it on my on my shoulder on my cheek and I kept eating. I was like, hello. And I kept eating my wings. Yeah. And I was like, hey, can I, can I call you back? I'm in the middle of a lunch thing, and I'm, I have hot sauce everywhere. And I hung up the phone, and he looks at me. He goes, you're eating like a goddamn circus bear. <laughs> and everybody started cracking up. Well, it was just a small joke that it kind of stuck. Yeah. That everybody started kind of calling me that. I had friends that friends, we had mutual friends that you know had heard the story. And so that came about. And I, I love tinkering with drums. I love tuning. I love cleaning. I, it's very therapeutic for me well, because, to clean. Well, because uh, you had a, a post uh, just maybe a month or two back. You, you were like Circus Bear, this drum services. Right, which is where I'm going with this. Gotcha. Mm-hmm. So I love to tinker. I love to clean. It's very therapeutic for me to sit and strip a whole drum apart. Yep. And, and it's it's like old men that build birdhouses. Mm-hmm. I, I get it. Or a guy that tinkers with his car in his garage. I mm-hmm. get it. It's mm-hmm. therapeutic. Mm-hmm. Um so I started doing all this in my house, and uh, some buddies, uh, somebody had asked, like, hey, can you come help me build a rack? It was like Keo. Uh, Keo. I started helping Keo mm-hmm. build uh, some projects, some cases, and uh, a rack. And he was like, hey, do you know how to solder? Can you drill some holes in my bass drum to put some Kelly shoes in? But we want to mic, put mic connectors on the kick drum. They don't want cables going out the front. I can do all that, sure. Yeah. So we started tinkering with stuff. Well, soon enough, somebody else called. Hey, I saw that you helped Keo do this. Can you help me do this? Mm-hmm. And this has been for the last six months, maybe. Yeah. So just person after person would call. You want to come help me build this rack for my, you know, like Billy Freeman called. You want to come help me build an entire rack design for my, my the Dustin Lynch show this year? Absolutely. That sounds like fun. Yeah. So a friend of mine and I were having lunch about uh, less than a month ago. And he goes, dude, you just got to open up Instagram page. Yeah. So what are you talking about? And he goes, you're, you've got like a drum service thing here going. Mm-hmm. I'm like, well, like, kind of, but it's just for friends. Like, yeah, you know, I don't want to charge people for this. Mm. Like, I'm just doing this because I love you guys and I, lo- I have mm-hmm. fun doing it. Mm-hmm. You know, what else? 
I don't want to. I, I love the way I get to spend my day. I get to go hang out with my friends and do drum shit. Like that's fun to right. me. Right. Um, by the end, of, by the end of the lunch, I had an Instagram. So yeah. he had talked me into setting up an Instagram, Circus Bear Drum Services. <laughs> yeah. He goes, it's perfect. Yeah. Somebody at Jeff Brown made a logo out of a joke, and he literally made the Circus Bear Drum Services it logo. Looks, it's great. Which we both kind of kind of tweaked. Can I put it on the – Absolutely. I, okay, I'm going to You can put it. whatever you want on there. All right. Um, yeah, it's fun, man. Uh, well, it, so, I mean, where, where, where is it at right now? I mean, what, what's, at what stage? It's is, still in my mind is that it's a joke thing. Like, mm-hmm. it's still just something fun. Yeah. And I, you know, I, I've done, I've done help Jake Gammon kind of strip and clean because I love to clean. So I, I, I cleaned up his touring kit and we reheaded it and tuned it for for this year's stuff. And he goes, and I see, he goes, man, how much? Or, or he's like, how much do I owe you? I'm like, hey, man, I'm nothing. I just enjoy coming and hanging out. Mm-hmm. And I kind of knew I know his boss, so I got to hang with some some of the band guys that I knew. And he goes, you don't owe me anything. I was like, or I said, you don't owe me anything. He goes, no, no, bro, I'm I'm gonna pay you. He goes, you're not doing this shit for free. You've literally just taken two days out of your life mm. or a day or two to come yeah. wait up to Madison, 20 miles up to Madison from your house. I'm, I'm paying you. Mm-hmm. I'm like, no, you're not. By the end of the day, there was a Venmo notification pop up that he had paid me. And I'm like, dude, I'm, I'm not transferring that to my bank. Like, you're just a buddy. <laughs> like, this is fun. He goes, take the damn money. Yeah. Which turned into me having a conversation with Murphy. And he's going, don't you ever do this shit for free. Yeah, it comes Which, to, yeah. I like you know. It's kind of hard to take money from friends. I don't. I'm I'm a helper. I love helping. I love giving. Mm-hmm. I love doing for other people. It's how yeah. I get my kicks. Yeah, I love being an asset to people. Yeah, I, and I hate having to charge money for it. But when I look yeah. at it in the long run, and I look at guys like Ben Jackson, who is mm-hmm. incredibly smart with Ableton, he yeah. charges for his services. It, but he didn't at first, and, no. and I think there was a, there was a similar. Uh, well, it's story uh, origin to to how that got started as to what you're well, going. It's about time. You're not paying me to come clean a drum kit. You're not pay, paying me to come cut your pipes down or or help redesign the artistry of your rack. It's about my time. It is. It's it's people. It's like we always say. I don't get paid to play the drums. I get paid to get on the plane. Yeah. I get paid to haul my shit in. I get paid to be away from my family. Yeah. I get paid to to listen to the sound guy bitch about whatever went wrong the entire day. It, it's that's what you're paying me for. Right. Right. No, I think it's important that it, going back to the whole thing uh, that you were mentioning about Tootsie's was um, sometimes when we set a standard. Um. You, it 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 adds value to what you do, and you would be surprised how easily people are ready to pay you for what you do. They get it, man. We yeah. all have bills. Yeah. It's okay to ask for monetary compensation for something, even if it's something... Are you something asking me to cut you a check right now? Right. Because I, I, even if it's for something that you love. Yeah. You know, and I think that there's something about our psyche that we're afraid to ask for that like if you're earning money you have to hate what you do i don't like asking my friends for things i love doing i don't want to ask you know i don't want to ask somebody you know you know i can you pay me a little bit for doing this i don't want to i i that's the worst feeling in the entire world i want to be able to do for people but at the same time like we get to work with our friends a lot yeah. in this business, and so it is weird. And you know, I'll tell you this one quick story: is that I was uh, working with an engineer producer friend of mine a lot, and at, a couple years ago, and this guy from Georgia would come in and record a couple records, and he was pretty well off. And so he'd say uh, after the session, he'd say, uh, "How much do I owe you?" And and well, we 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 talked about this, you know, for the session. Is that okay? He goes, of course, yeah. I mean, it's your time. You, this is, yeah. yeah. I've hired you. Those are the kind of people you like working with. I, I do, but because but then get it. he said, he said to me and the engineer, he goes, you you both do this. Let me tell you, when I hire a plumber and he comes over and I say, how much do I? Uh, he'll say, one hundred fifty bucks. He doesn't say, is that okay? No, he came in, he fixed the plumbing. He is a plumber. He did his job, yeah. and he says, this is how much you owe me. He goes, you guys are doing a job. I mean, we're having a good time. Right. We're drinking Royal Crown. We're making a record. But you know what? I've hired you. Yeah. So tell me how much I owe you. 
because you did a good job. I'm going to pay you. At the, at the same time, that sounds like one of those guys that number one gets it. That's a good person that, yeah, that gets yeah. that gets the whole thing. Yeah. But you also have those guys that are going to be like, well, thank you guys for coming. See you later. And well, you that's why I don't work in the screwed out of 150 yeah. bucks or you know whatever the session rate. That's why be. I don't do contemporary Christian music gigs. There you go. Oh. <laughs> did we say that? Can we edit that? I don't know. Hey, I've been there. I've done them. I've 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 done that world. I I am. I'm, I'm throwing people I'm, under the bus. I'm good. I'm sorry. I'm no, sorry. I, you're not going to offend me. Um, <laughs> well, and by the way, I think this is the most you've got to talk on a podcast. No, 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 no. no? This is the most that you're hearing me talk because I do talk a lot. I just edit myself out. Don't edit. No, I, I, like, I like this. I edit myself out because uh, it's well. I hate I tell my the, own voice, so this should be fun. Because people are like, "When are you going to be interviewed?" I'm like, "I've told all my stories already." Um, nobody's heard them. Uh, he, so we need to listen to. <laughs> so the the circus bear thing, you know, it started as a yeah. joke, became this this little techie thing, which I don't want it to be a full time thing. I don't want to be a full time tech. I, I don't think I, I love doing it, but I don't love it as much as playing in this business. Uh, a lot of us, most of us, have to wear many hats, uh, spin many plates and, in order to. And that's uh, something a lot of people don't get. Pay the Somebody bills. Somebody moves here is you know I'm just going to play drums. Yeah. Well, buddy, you're you're going to have to learn to bust tables or mm-hmm. flip a burger or learn how to sell stuff at Guitar Center mm-hmm. because I can guarantee you. You know I loved Kyle Wilkerson's comment on our bringing up our hundredth. Mm-hmm. Uh, your hundredth show again. You know, he said he's had three hundred dollars in his account when he first moved here. Yeah, I went on the road uh, a year or two after moving just to do a, a thing. I had negative three hundred. <laughs> I had a moment to where I panicked because yeah. something had overdrafted, and it and I didn't know because I was in North Dakota for a week, so I wasn't checking my bank statements. Everything was covered there. Yeah, negative three hundred fifty dollars. Yeah, you want to talk about the biggest panic of my life? Yeah, I'm on the phone with my parents like luckily they were nice enough to to mm-hmm. get me out of this predicament yeah. and i paid them back yeah but yeah it's it's i love being able to wear multiple hats mm-hmm. whether somebody thinks i'm good at all of them or not eh, i don't know yeah. but i like to be hireable and yeah. i think that's something a lot of younger people need to learn is mm-hmm. is you, you've got to make yourself available whether it's playing on broadway or mm-hmm taking a road gig or doing, I mean, doing whatever you want to do, but you've got to be adaptable. And if you're you not have the first, multiple skill sets, it makes you, even, yeah. it makes you more hireable. It, right. It's great. Right. It says a lot about you. It says a lot about your work ethic and, and that goes a long way in people considering you for those road gigs and your road gig came out of working on Broadway. Yeah. And you're one of many people that that's, that's that story uh, oh yeah, yeah I wasn't the first, to, and I definitely won't yeah. be the last. But it, yeah. it's, it's a rarity. Yeah. I think it's not something that happens every week. Yeah, you know. Before you lose your voice, I'm gonna let you go, so you can do your. Oh yeah, I have a session. background vocal session in like uh, an hour. So this was yeah, yeah, okay. <laughs> I'll be fine. Well, thanks, man. I yeah. appreciate. Uh, this was fun. I, I don't. I'm like I said, I've never done this, and yeah. I, I haven't sat in front of a microphone this long since I've been in radio. So this was... Uh, your voice is good, man. Yeah. Oh, no, this wasn't you, even my radio voice. You, you, you don't even hear that. Well, Thank you for not asking me to do okay, it. Okay, so, I, so I, what I are you going to... So no. how do you do... Let's do a sign-off. No, I don't... I don't know. I don't do that. Can you do... Uh, no. No. Because uh, no, because if I do it now, everybody's going to want me to do it when they on, see me in person. You've got to diversify, man. No. Say, I, you've been listening. My, this is... Come on. I, oh, this that's the Willie's thing. I have like 10 different voices depending on what I'm doing. Working Drummer Podcast. I like yours better. You have the most. You're like Bob Ross. I, if you if <laughs> you did hair? a podcast, no no no. If you did a podcast of just you talking, I could fall asleep to it because Hello. you have this. Oh, good. Soothing. <laughs> you have this soothingness about your voice. I love watching do Bob another, Ross before I go to sleep. I'm going to do the podcast for getting people to go to sleep because there are those that exist. Oh yeah, yeah. yeah nonsensical. No, you, you have one of those just relaxing. Hey, and I can and I can go on nonsensical rants that mean absolutely nothing. Ask my wife. And my kids, for that matter. Actually, you yeah. know, I'll do a podcast, How to Talk to Your Kids About Proper um, Anything, and I will bore you like um, John Kerry. Yeah. I mean, I will say okay. more than I need right. to say. <laughs> I get it. Hey, um, if you're not going to sign off, I'm going to sign off. Okay. You've been listening to Working Drummer Podcast. There it is. All right. That's <laughs> Thanks, man. Hey, thank you, Matt. 
All right, so Will's a bit of a nut job, as you can tell. I enjoy talking to him, and I think maybe he got me to talk more than I normally do. I got lost in the conversation. That was fun. He uh, was part of our 100th episode, and it's been good to get to know Will uh, a little bit over that time and uh, through this episode. I hope you guys enjoyed it uh, as much as I did. As I mentioned at the top of this uh, episode, we are uh, looking to find other formats to get these episodes to you as easy and efficient as possible, so uh, we'll keep you updated with that. As always, my thanks goes to Mike Jackson for his technical assistance, and Mike is putting a lot of extra time this week into getting these new formats going, and I super appreciate that. Stay tuned next week for Zach Albetta and his interview. Uh, just want to add that uh, a lot of things are coming into shape this 2017, and I'm very excited about some of the new developments that we've got for the podcast and hopefully for you. And um, as I mentioned uh, probably a couple times, one of my uh, longtime road gigs, I have uh, left that in an effort to concentrate uh, more on Nashville, more on my family, more on the things that I've been missing by being out on the road. And uh, if you are a regular listener to this podcast, you know that these are things that we have discussed many times. These are the challenges that as musicians and working drummers, we have to deal with. And uh, I am dealing with it personally. So uh, the Definitely many positive things from this big change with me. Putting some renewed energy into the podcast is one of them. So again, thanks for everyone's support and listening, and I hope to see you around. Bye-bye.